to the Built on Air podcast, the variety show for all things Airtable. Each episode, we cover four different segments. It's always fresh and different and lots of fun while you get the insider info on all things Airtable. Our hosts and guests are some of the most senior experts in the Airtable community. Join us live each week on our YouTube channel every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And join our active community at builtonair.com slash join. Before we begin, a word from our sponsor, OntoAir.com. Any business running on Airtable gets the value that Airtable has, but also needs a few more functions to complete their operations. That's where OntoAir comes in. It's a suite of tools for any business running on Airtable to maximize your operations efficiencies and automations. One customer, John, states that OntoAir enables his business to function properly without having to think about building their own software, and that is pretty invaluable. The OntoAir Airtable apps are amazing, and we use them often and are very happy with the results. So join John and hundreds more customers and take your Airtable to the next level with OntoAir. Sign up today with promo code BUILTONAIR for a 10% discount. Check them out at OntoAir.com. And now let's check out today's episode and see what we built on air. All right, welcome to the Built on Air live show podcast. We're glad you could make it with us. We have a big group with us today. We're excited to be with everyone and go through today's episode. We have with us, I'm Dan Fellers. We have our regulars, Ali Alosa and Camille Park. And then we have a special guest host with us, Jen Rudd. Welcome, Jen. Glad to have you. We're going to learn more about Jen in a, in a segment coming up here. So we're going to jump right into it with our first um, segment for today's show. We're going to get into Round the Bases. This is where we go through the different communities and see what's going on, what people are talking about, anything new that you need to be aware of in the Airtable universe. So with that, why don't we jump into the Airtable community itself and see what people are talking about. Um, Anybody been involved in any discussions in the Airtable community this week? As per usual, yes. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I can't remember if it was this past week or the week before, but they announced, uh, for developers on the forums, there is the testing API for, um, Mm. custom apps. Um, I don't understand it, but I'm sure another developer will. (laughs) Yeah. So if you're building a custom app using the, the custom app environment, um, yeah, they have a testing environment to where, you can create um, uh, test cases and and automate some testing of it. Camille, I know can vouch for this, having put some apps in the marketplace, me as well. Um, It's a pain to kind of work with their table. They go through a Q and A process and can take some time. So I'm sure this is an effort to speed that up, which will be good, but puts more of the burden on, on the developer to to add that functionality into their app to build out the testing. So yeah, have you played with it? I haven't yet. I'm working on an idea for a new app that I'm more or less starting from scratch and I'd rather test it on that versus um, an app that I kind of already had cooking. But in terms of announcements that I've seen from Airtable on the forums, that's uh, I think the main one in the past week or so. Yep, yep. Yeah, we went through their announcements for last month on last week's show. Um, So yeah, that probably is the only announcement from Airtable themselves. Um, Here is an interesting one. This is something that hopefully Airtable fixes at some point of multiple API keys. Um, This person brings up a really good point that kind of is standard practice to allow you to to generate multiple keys for different use cases or different platforms so that you can, you know, you're not using the same key everywhere. Um, so that's something that hopefully Airtable addresses at some point. Um, Cause it is kind of restricting to only have one API key for each user. Any other interesting questions coming through on the community? 
Um, it wasn't really a question. It was more of like uh, feature enhancements that I saw um, requested for the map app. Um, right now, there are a bunch of new custom apps being added to the Airtable marketplace every day, but there hasn't really been uh, much in the way of uh, alternatives to the map app. And I, I was reading through uh, this person's suggestions for it, and it kind of demonstrates that there's some significant kind of limitations to uh, mapping your Airtable records geographically. And I, I just wanted to, you know, highlight that in case anyone need an idea for an app well, to develop. Wondering, is that the next chameleon air app? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, for me specifically, making an app map app would be the most relevant to me and what I what it is I do, yeah. <laughs> generally speaking, but I'm not touching maps. I don't want to. <laughs> Yeah, that, that opens up a big can of worms there. <laughs> uh, Mini Extensions does have like a map extension that works pretty mm -hmm. well and it doesn't require a like a Google Maps developer account to use it. So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. I have that's nice. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was a new um a new app by the Sync Inc. team. Um where you can actually write uh, SQL queries inside of their app to query your, your Airtable base using SQL. So if you're familiar with SQL and you struggle with the, the lack of SQL support in Airtable, it's an interesting way. Um, they do that by they actually map your data to a, a Postgres database. So that allows you to query that database using SQL. So interesting new application there okay. so yeah i think kind of standard lots of questions lots of people looking for consulting so uh, relatively standard week nothing nothing too big on discussion no, no heated topics like there have been in the past so relatively quiet on that front Similarly, in the Built on Air community, builtonair.com, uh, we have a Slack community that's that's fairly active. Looks like we got Jen asking a question. What were you asking about, Jen? Um, yeah, actually, I noticed Friday afternoon I was um, adjusting a filter, and I saved it and locked it, and I checked all the records that were supposed to be in that filtered view, and they were fine. The next morning, I woke up, and Zapier had turned off a zap because basically it took off that second filter I added to the filtered view and basically rolled it back to about 4 p.m. Eastern Standard, and it flipped out Zapier, and I emailed them, and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Did you just mess up? <laughs> so I was <laughs> like, uh, is that like a new bug? Uh, so that was something that came up that was random because I... I'm pretty OCD when it comes to looking at my views and making sure I lock them before I turn on zaps and it was working fine and I had the right view, the right um, records. And then sometime overnight, it just decided that it didn't like that filter anymore and deleted everything. So very interesting. Wow. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. At least Zapier turned it off. <laughs> yeah, Zapier is good about, the, they'll shut it off when it gets too out of, out of whack. <laughs> yeah. And it yeah, was that can be... weird because I, I had fixed it earlier that day. And I know because we had that problem where it was putting too many records in the view. So I know for a fact I fixed it. So okay. <laughs> this one did have a weird hiccup on Friday. Um, it was like down for a little bit. I don't know if maybe like that had something to do with it. Like it didn't actually save what the yeah. filter was. Right. Yeah. And in, in previous weeks, people were saying that filters were... Yeah, they must be doing something to the underlying filter infrastructure. I think so. I've had some really weird experiences where like I'll save something or I'll regroup something or change even maybe the, the formula that things are grouped by. And like the UI just gets so out of whack. Like I'll end up sometimes with like a double screen and it's just really weird. I have to refresh yeah. to get it to go away. Yeah, hopefully they work through their kinks and we see some enhancements in that area. There's also some, looks like some coding, scripting questions going on. 
Shay asking about daytime format, daytime formats, uh, formula within the, the, the formulas. Um, and very useful if you're trying to formulate uh, dates. I actually ran into an issue. I didn't post this in the community, but um, I just, I have a European customer who they do their dates differently and um, didn't realize that when you push through the API, there's a, it, it, it you know, it, you need to be careful about the format that you're pushing dates in via the API if they're, if their system is set up for a different format for the, for the dates. And um, so that was causing some issues for us. So we had to make our, our software a bit more sophisticated to handle that. So yeah, relatively quiet week on, on the Slack community as well. Um, nothing, I think everybody's kind of head down working, not a lot of new stuff coming out. So let's move on to Reddit. There is a good um, post here. Oh, sorry, that, that was on Facebook. We'll get to that. Um, so Reddit, like I've mentioned before, um, a bit more technical. You'll see a lot of um, programming questions. Um, you see here, they've announced their app. So this is that sync app that, that I mentioned earlier. Um, somebody asking about WhatsApp. I saw a couple questions about WhatsApp, trying to integrate with Airtable. Haven't ever tried that. Um, Google Sheets, that seems to be a common um, integration that people are looking for. I, I know Coupler IO for Google yep. Sheets syncing. Yep. Yeah, Coupler IO has been out there. Um, our on to air is moving in that direction. So we'll be we'll be integrating with Google Sheets here soon. Very cool. Um, but yeah, Coupler IO. They actually, I just got an email from them. If you're doing any any integration where you need to sync data, they've got a pretty good platform now. They sync data to um, big 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 query. So if you're doing any kind of big data type stuff and you have data in Airtable, um, that's one to check out. This one's interesting. We could maybe even answer this. He hasn't gotten an answer. So they're asking why you can't insert into a lookup field inside of an automation. And the obvious answer there is because those are not editable fields mm -hmm. and those are being pulled. So you would have to push to the table where the lookup field is coming from. So just kind of a, a lack of understanding there on how lookup fields work. It would be nice if you could push from the table that's pulling it from where it would, you know, propagate down to the, the linked table, um, assuming that that field is an editable field. But um, yeah, you can't, you can't push data into a lookup field. It'd be nice if they added a update linked record or re records uh, action step. So if you, if you select the trigger records, linked field, it would take the array of IDs um, and then and I and the table that it's associated with and then push that to another step that would update um, all of those linked ones. That'd be yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's where you get into kind of the multiple update. Yeah, batch. Yeah. Yeah, and it gets tricky having implemented that. We we've implemented that within Zapier with Ontair, and and I can attest to why they may be afraid to to take that on. Um, one, it's tricky technical, although Airtable could definitely solve that. But but it it gets confusing to kind of the average user on on all that data going on. It it can it can get kind of tricky, especially if you have, you know, one array that has three elements and another array that has five, and you're trying to push all those into the same records, you got to be aware of, you know, if, if you don't have the same number of data for every record it can get can get challenging. So 
Anyways, seems like that's what's uh, going on. Um, again, another front end question. You see, you seem to see these a lot. Standard kind of front end UI uh, portal type system, Stacker, Pori, Softer, uh, mini extensions. Um, these are a bit more higher end app sheet and retool. Those might be for more kind of enterprise, bigger customers, technical um, people. Bubble, Bubble's another one that is gaining a lot of traction. You start to see that coming up a bit more. Uh, I don't know if any of you have used Bubble. Not in anything in production, but I've tried using Bubble and it's the learning curve is insane. Yeah. Yes. yeah. It's a crazy learning curve. Yeah. It's yeah, for sure. That's it, it. Yeah. You're almost like learning a new programming language with Bubble. Yeah. So you're like, I could either learn this proprietary language or I could just build it in standard HTML, CSS. <laughs> right. So yeah, it's definitely you get tied into to that platform if you if you use it. But people build pretty powerful websites with it. And yeah. So if you're willing to to go up that learning curve, it, it could be powerful, but definitely ties you in. Um, this one is not quite the answer to that question, but kind of cool. I think I think um, this person's in our community as well. Speak enable that they're building voice functionality so you can like interact with your Airtable base through voice commands. And so that's kind of cool. Um, and it kind of uses Airtable as like your database of voice commands. And so you can, I think, if I understand it correctly, you can build out sort of your table of voice commands in, in Airtable and then use that to interact with other um system so Airtable kind of is an easy way to to store your your voice commands there so cool stuff but yeah these are kind of the standard i think i think um they all kind of serve different purposes stacker is a little bit different than pori and softer soft those two are kind of more direct competitors um but they seem to be very well received now there is Airtable down. I think there was an outage this last week. Um, seems to be fairly common, although it seems to be a little bit less than it was months ago. <laughs> yeah, there's an ad for uh, our Ontario product. We just launched our functions. Check that out. Here's another one. Oh no, this is the one we went. So we talked about this one. So I think we've reached our are there so that's reddit so yeah lots of technical discussions um scripting integrations things like that dealing with the api here's one this one looks pretty interesting a a, 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 um, a tutorial on how to use the api and to create charts which is also a very uh useful high highly requested functionality so if you're looking to create charts um, here's a blog tutorial on how to do that with the API. All right, moving on to the Facebook community. So this was the, the post I was thinking of, um, probably worth reading from Chris Dancy. Hopefully we'll get Chris on the show sometime. What, what's his title? What is he self-proclaimed? Oh, the world's most connected man. That's right. World's most connected man. Google it and he will show up. So he's he's very active in the community. He probably has maybe the most, I don't know, Ali, maybe you can compete with Chris on the most complex base. <laughs> I'm probably up there, that's for sure. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I have anything nearly as complex as his. So we're checking out. But he has a great quote on automation, basically don't try to automate something before you've done it manually. You really have to know what you're trying to automate. Um, I, I get that a lot doing client work. I'll get customers kind of saying, we want something automated. Like we want it all automated. We just want it to do everything for us. And you kind of try to figure out what exactly that means. And they haven't really done it themselves. So they don't know, you know, they just, 
know what the finished product is, but they don't know quite the steps to get there. So you don't, you can't really automate steps that you haven't, you know, really fleshed out. So definitely good advice. Um, so document, understand, and measure the impact. He calls himself Grandpa Cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else? I know some of you are involved in this community. Gareth looking for people. I saw somebody volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you'll get on. And Ali, Ali, you might be able to know how to reach this person. <laughs> I'd love to interview you, Camille. <laughs> yeah, so that would be good. It's a podcast within a podcast. <laughs> Very meta. <clears throat> you could do it right now. Right. I'm, hand it over to oh, Gareth, so. I'm wearing this shirt today and everything. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just realized. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Where'd you get that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Various entanglements with their table. I Who love members? I have Airtable socks and I lost one of them. Oh, and no. I'm so sad. I like, I've just lost them both and yeah. just not had the memory of it. <laughs> we'll frame it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, just general questions. Let's see. So here's a new product I haven't seen before. Use Macro. Mm -hmm. Looks like they have an Airtable integration. So some kind of task system that it looks integrates. like a sauna. What's that? It looks like a sauna. Yeah, similar. It, so it looks similar. like a sauna, but I think it is kind of a, a alternative. Mode. Yeah, alternative to like Zapier or something to do mini kind of connections between your products. Very cool. Cool. So that's good. Um, People asking questions. Here's one. So yeah, so <laughs> crazy formulas. Uh, yeah, I've seen some. If we ever hear again, there is one person out in the community that, that we haven't heard from in a while that probably is the leader in crazy formulas. W uh, that's, Van, Hall. Uh, Van Hall, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday he'll he'll come back to us. <clears throat> but yeah, there's some crazy formulas out there, especially how small the, the formula editor is. And it's amazing what people can write in that small space and just be scrolling up and down like crazy. So a lot of people I know write outside. If you're writing really big formulas, you write it in a text editor. The problem is you don't have the autocomplete there. Mm -hmm. um, that that would be, I still think if somebody wanted to take the time to write an app to build a better formula editor, I think that would be really powerful if you could integrate um, the autocomplete functionality into it. So there's another app idea for somebody out there. All right. getting started. So attachments, somebody asking about losing quality. Um, so it's interesting. I think that, uh, yeah, if you use the API when you're dealing with attachments, it will actually give you multiple, um, it will give you a thumbnail version of the, of the attachment file, mm -hmm. if it's, especially if it's an image. Um, and so it'll give you different versions of it, but I believe I'm pretty sure. And I think the answer to this as well, that it will keep the original, um, the original file in, in the attachment. It doesn't try to compress images or anything, but the thumbnail version is, is a smaller compressed version. All right. I think that's, that's all of it. Let's move on. Next, we've got YouTube. We were noticing YouTube changed their, their layout. Um, so this one's kind of cool. We're getting a bit more international. It looks like I'm guessing Italian, this one. Mm -hmm. and we got Japanese, we got Spanish. So in the first six, we've got three different, four different languages. So getting, getting more broad global um, usage, which is cool. 
And um, so it looks like, you know, this noble, which is an integration with uh, Webflow, I believe. Um, that seems to be making the rounds on a lot of podcasts. So we're checking out if you're using Webflow. And our friend Ben Green, who I think we'll have on the show eventually, he's got a few videos out. We're checking out. He's also one of the hosts for the um, the live show in the Facebook community. <clears throat> and as always, we got Gareth and his regular videos. Definitely worth checking out. And Data Fetcher, the new one. So how to free up space. So this is a good one. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're dealing with a lot of data, you understand the limitations. I always have to explain people, they always, you know, Airtable's limitation if you're on the pro plan is 50,000 records, but that's across all tables in your base. And so it's, so some people think that that's on a per table basis, but they don't realize you gotta sum up all of your tables. So it can add up, 50,000 is, you know, not a huge number if you're dealing, especially like in the e-commerce world or trying to track any kind of customer interaction. So there are companies that, that hit that limit and you have to figure out ways to, to free up <clears throat> moving your records. So looks like this video kind of goes through some ways to do that, which is useful. Also, if you're using um, synced tables, that also counts towards your record count. So, um, so you have to factor that in if you're, you, if you're syncing a table from one base to another. Yeah, it will count um, each synced record in both the origin and any tables it's synced to. So you may be counting the same record multiple times depending on where you've synced it to. Yeah, very good. Any final thoughts on any community items going on? Not this week. Yeah, pretty quiet. Okay, we're gonna move on to a um, spotlight. The guest or the the primary sponsor of Built on Air is on to air the all in one toolkit to run your business on Airtable. So check it out. I am the founder of On to Air, and in today's spotlight for On to Air, I'm gonna revisit our Amplify product. This is the best editor for interacting with your data inside of Airtable. So it's an app that you can install from the marketplace. And in this one, I wanted to showcase um, one of the views that, that we currently support that's out there in today's product, in today's version. Um, and it's the ability to embed iframes, which is the ability to embed another website into one of these views here. So. All you have to do is click on the plus button and then this is part of the record previewer. So you click on add and then in here you click on field settings and you specify a field that will have a, a, a URL inside of the field. So this could be a URL field, it could be a text field, but it could also be a formula field, which is really powerful because then you can generate a dynamic URL that will have some kind of information coming from that record specifically. So I thought it'd be interesting, a common use case is if you're doing marketing and you, and you wanna do some SEO or competitive research and you wanna see what is showing up in the Google results um, for a particular company, this, this will showcase that. So the content type, I'm telling it that this is going to be a URL and then you exit out of here. And so now this is pointing to a field over in our base, in our table, that is pointing to the Google search results page. And it's dynamically adding in um, the search phrase that I wanna search for, for this record. And I'm using this um, encode URL component, which is important to use. That kind of is a little bit technical, but it allows you to if you have any kind of non-standard um, characters in your text, even spaces need to be converted into a special character. Um, and so this function will do that for you. 
And so now if you just have any kind of search phase associated with any um, record, this will automatically look it up within Google so you can see search results for that keyword. So you can have search phrases for each record. So if this is all of your companies, you can maybe do a keyword search on that company or whatever you want. And then the cool thing is, is as you navigate through this base, it switches. So now I'm on this record. And so you see the search results switch to this keyword. So it's now searching built on air. So now if I were to go into full screen mode and just kind of play around with this, I could easily just be navigating through all of my companies, my, my competitors or, or my clients and quickly do quick Google searches. This one didn't have one, have any um, keyword search. So I could actually add it a uh, editor field here. And so I can search my own name. This might be scary. <laughs> <laughs> and it instantly searches that. There we go. That is not me. <laughs> There's another damn fellers out there working for Matterport. That second one is me. <clears throat> All right. So have, have any uh, of us ever called you Danny? <laughs> uh, my my family calls me Danny. Okay. Well <laughs> you can call me Danny. Friends call me Danny. I okay. I, I went by Danny growing up, so my right. secret is out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, people still call me Danny. But I usually introduce myself as Dan. It's just easier. So that is on to air and a great way to use the um, the record previewer and, and embed iframes into there. So check out on to air uh, amplify. We also have another a ton of other applications that help you run your business and amplify. You can get by simply add an app. Find us in the all app section. Um, somewhere there we are right here and just add it free trial 14 days to, to test it out and see how it goes. All right, we are now, I'm going to hand it off to, to Ali and Jen, and we're going to do this segment on meet the experts where we're going to learn more about Jen and what she's up to. Awesome. Great. Well, I'm super excited because Jen, we haven't had a chance to talk yet. And I'm, I've been seeing you around in tons of different communities that we were just looking at in our first segment. Um, so I'm really excited to get to know you. And thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, so you have a, a company about all I know is you have a company called Grow With Jen and you are an Airtable consultant. Mm -hmm. um, how long have you been doing that for? Um, I've been in business, July will be 10 years. Um, I started out in marketing automation for real estate agents um, and building transaction coordination software. And now I'm into um, basically integrating different softwares together, Airtable being the main vehicle that I work with. That's awesome. So your background was like in technology, so you've got a lot more. I was actually an accountant um, until 10 years ago when my daughter was born and I didn't want to go back to work. So I'm like, what am I going to do now? So um, I basically taught myself how to build websites. I was building them in like 1996 uh, for my parents' um, company, but um, learned how to do websites and then learned how to do all the other things that I wanted to do with technology. So that's fun. super impressive. That's before me, Jen. Okay. <laughs> That's before me building websites. <laughs> it was a Microsoft uh, with Corel Publisher or like the version of Corel Publisher and it had a spinning gear because it was steel fabrication. So I had a gear running on the website and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> that was cool. I love oh, that. Man. And uh, how did you discover Airtable? Um, I had a couple clients and um, we were using some other CRMs and then we kept running into these issues where Google Sheets wasn't covering their database needs. And they kept saying, well, I saw this Airtable thing and I'm like, oh, it's okay. Like, we'll check it out, you know? And uh, eventually I started playing with it and I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> so, um, it's been about, I would say about a year and a half, two years now since I've found out about Airtable. So, but I've kind of dived in head first and found really cool applications for it. What are like some of the coolest apps you've built so far? Um, I worked with a lot of placement agencies. So I basically managed, like helped them manage both their clients and their applicants and kind of figuring out the relationship between the two. A lot of automation um, with uh, wedding, wedding venues and wedding um, vendors, things like that. 
Um, I also work with um, construction companies. Pretty much anyone can kind of organize their data and kind of action off of it and hopefully automate, but at least make it easier to kind of keep your data organized and stay on top of all the things that you have to do as a business. Yeah, absolutely. And I think all of us that are here now and all I'm sure everybody listening to knows like how crazy it's it can fit one size fits all like any industry, any work uh, use case. It's just crazy. Absolutely. Super, super cool. Um, so you started out with like accounting stuff. Have you done a lot of that in your table as well? Yeah, I actually work with an accountant who works with um, a lot of SaaS companies. And so we need like accrual calculators to keep track of all of the um, vendor payments and all the fees from the different processing companies and kind of doing some of those accrual calculators and using sync and using the relational database and doing roll ups and stuff like that. And just like this really cool basis that we make. So it's really nice because accountants kind of need to be able to take you know, 12 months of income and break it up over multiple months and know exactly when it's supposed to start and finish. So it's kind of cool that you can make this really huge calculator. Absolutely. That's something I've been working on for myself as well recently. So Airtable is really helpful for it. Totally. Definitely. Uh, what's next for you? Do you have any big projects coming up? Um, I'm working on some big stuff for... Um, um, insurance company. And then also um, I'm finishing out a really cool vendor um, management tool, like an event management tool for a wedding um, venue. I can actually show you some of that later. Um, but then I also was excited because on Built on Air, we were starting to do some training videos. And I started with um, intro to integrations, which talks about how to use Airtable with other software, mostly Zapier and Jotform, and how to get those tools to work together especially as you get more complex, complex businesses and or you need more complex tools. Sometimes the forms and Airtable is not going to work or you need to be able to process data and things like that. So trying to show how to use Airtable as like the vehicle, the machine, the engine in your business, and then using other tools to create better interfaces or, you know, just process data more efficiently or use outside users so that you're not having people in your base, because when you're start, starting to pay per person in your base, sometimes it gets really expensive in a smaller company. Mm -hmm. um, so trying to use more creative ways to get the information where it needs to go. So just breaking down like the basics of how to get different software to talk to one another using Airtable as the glue. Exactly. And that's that's something that I think once people realize like that you can do that, then it opens up so many doors. Yeah. It's like not in all the use cases, but it's like, here's just a taste of what you can do. And then once you have like a little bit of information, you can kind of run with it. So I think it's really interesting. And it's stuff that I've learned over the last couple of years with Airtable and just learning over the last maybe six or seven years with Zapier. So. Excellent. Well, wonderful. I think we're going to learn a little bit more about that today in our next segment. Which I'm looking forward to. Absolutely. And you also going back to school. What was the reason for that? <laughs> um, I've always wanted my MBA. Um, and a couple of years ago, the University of Illinois offered an online MBA. It's called the IMBA. So I thought it was really cool because they use Coursera with the massive open, the MOOCs where you can like take all the courses. And then they also have the back end of the actual professors. So I thought it was a really cool concept. And I'm finishing in December. So excited. Yay. So I'll have my MBA in December. Nice. And I'm doing yeah. it in entrepreneurship and business analytics. So I'm doing way too much in R right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been impressed with Jen on on um, some of the stuff that that you built. Because you haven't, would you say you have a programming background? I'm I, I can I learned in JavaScript and HTML like really long time ago. So yeah. I'm not I I would probably say I'm on the low code end of coding. Um, I do some I'm learning more as I go, but a lot of it is kind of like on the job training, which is like figuring it out. I did sat down and learn Python last year, which is hard for me. You um, poor soul. <laughs> yes. It was helpful because like taking my R class, I actually like was able to like understand what we were doing, even if I didn't really care. Um, so like I've learned over the years and I, it's funny because my family, everyone's an engineer or an accountant. So like I was like, oh, I'm not good in math. I can't be an engineer. And now I'm like, I probably could have been an engineer if I like spent five minutes learning any of this stuff when I was in school. So, um, but yeah, I'm definitely on the low code end of 
all this stuff. And I still think I can do some really cool stuff just with like graphical interfaces. So I think there's a lot to, to be able to do in Airtable and just in, you know, integration itself. Yeah. That's what I've been impressed with is you're not afraid to jump in and, and roll up your sleeves with projects that are on the complex side. So they're fun. I don't want to be boring and just yeah. set up some formulas and we're done. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Although formulas are very helpful. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you, Ali and Jen. And it's good to have you with us. Absolutely. So we're actually, we're going to, we're going to put Jen uh, to work here on the podcast. And so Jen is going to share her screen. I will add it now. And this section is automate, create, and we go through how to use automations to run your business and be more efficient, learning the powerful um, aspects of, of Airtable automations. So let me, there you go. Go okay. for it, Jen. Thank you. Um, so Going back, we talked a little bit about dates and its importance for like automations in general. And just as you're looking at information in, in Airtable, sometimes what Airtable is showing you isn't what Airtable actually has underlying. Um, I've run into some issues, especially like in the event space where dates show up in UTC, which is like the standard whatever time, not the time zone that you're in. So even though you like today's 518 Eastern Standard Time, if it's too close to the day before or the day after or whatever, sometimes the dates will change. So it'll actually say 521 instead of 520. So it's really important when you're putting in dates, even if Airtable is reflecting back at you the date that you're the time zone that you're in, sometimes you have to force it to understand the time zone that you want to see information in. Um, and so like this is a lot of the stuff in automations is that you want to make sure that you're setting up your base and you have really good organization of your base and the data reflects how you want it to before you actually start um, building out automations. Um, so I took this base as a template from Airtable. And the first thing I noticed is that the dates were not showing in the time zone. So even though I have the base settings as I want everything in Eastern Standard Time, if it was trying to read the date to send information out of Airtable, it would send it in UTC time which would screw up times and it would also screw up dates depending on what date it is. Um, so basically whenever you put in formulas, the date time format's really important. Um, and you can also make sure that you set time zone and then this is the time zone when I'm in. Um, so that's the first thing is the event information. I wanted to make sure that all the dates were set up correctly. And then something my husband even laughed at me about is that when you enter in times in Airtable, you can't just type in 9.30 a.m. It will just default to the current date, so you have to use this dropdown, hmm. which is weird. Um, and you'll see this vendor confirmation went out. I set up an automation to say, but first I created some formulas too. I want thing. I want information. Um, sometimes I send out text messages. Sometimes I send out emails, and I want them to go out in relation to a date. So, as a vendor for or as a wedding venue, for example, if you want to alert the you know wedding party or a vendor that something's happening in a couple days, you want to make sure that you're going based off the hours of the events and not the date. So, like if you just want it two days ahead of time, if you do that it will say, okay, at midnight, it's now two days away. So, so you're sending text messages at midnight to people saying like, hey, your wedding's in two days. They're like, great, I'm sleeping. <laughs> um, so I, I realized that you have to actually figure out the number of hours to the events. So like, you know, an event two days away is 48 hours. It's also important, like when you're changing statuses and you're sending out emails to people, if you're sending out, if you're changing statuses, during the day, during the business day, and you want like a follow-up in a CRM to follow up two days later, you wanna go off of hours and not days, because again, it'll send out those emails at midnight instead of 48 hours after you initially change that status. So um, I found a formula that's really been helpful is the date time difference, which is, and then based off of a date and then using now and then setting I want it in hours. Sometimes I do it in minutes if I want it to be like an hour ahead of time. Um, and then the more, granular you get with the times, the more control you have over when the emails go out. 
Um, and then also when you're looking at information, so like if I wanted an email to say, hey, this event is on, you know, 520 and 1141 AM, I want to make sure that I'm formatting it as a formula instead of just using this date over here because it will have that weird Z time. It'll be like 521, 2021, and then have like negative 800, whatever. It has that weird UTC time. So even though Airtable is showing you 1141, it's really like it's whatever UTC time. So whenever I'm sending out emails, I always add in the formula for the date. And then sometimes you want to have more conversational com um, emails instead of saying, Hey, this event is on 521 at 1140, 521, 1141. You want to say, hi, this event is on 520 at this time. So you have to break those up into two different formulas. And so I can send out an email. It's more conversational than time, stamp, time and date stamps. Um, so those are the hours. So that's why I had the hours to event and because it's, 47 hours away from now, I sent an email to a vendor. And the email is just going to me because I have it set up, but you can also pick up vendor emails and things like that from your base. And then I have, you know, this event name will be on this date at this time. And then I said, I wanted to reply back to a certain email address. And I'm using that because I'm using Zapier and Parser to pick up when somebody replies back to an email. So what happens is so here is an email to a vendor and you don't want a whole bunch of information like you don't want them to be like, OK, you have to reply back to this email with this exact string of characters or whatever. So what I did was I put in the record ID for that event in the email here, just internal use record ID. And so what happens is, and my email has a kill switch, so this will take a minute, is I can literally reply back to this. And Zapier will pick this up. And it will note that the vendor confirms. And it will also add a note to the email. Um, you'll also see that I update records whenever I send emails to just say that I sent the confirmation. So. And give it a minute and I'll do its thing. I try to, of course, stop here to do stuff and it never does. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's important for automations to just make sure that you have like this ability to have the information formatted the way that you want somebody outside of Airtable to understand it. Like they won't understand timestamps. And sometimes you might need more granular pieces of information. So, see, now you see this is confirmed. And did you did you mention? Um, I think you talked about this. What what are you using to send the email out? Um, I'm using the send email from um, Airtable automations. The Gmail send yeah. email. Yeah. So yeah, so Airtable supports Gmail, and then they can send it directly from from Airtable. Although that one has a limit on you can only send what a hundred a day. Yeah, it's less than, it's either 100, I know mostly STMP, whatever is, or like 250 is a max you can send from an automation thing like that. Um, the nice thing is, is it like comes from you, so it doesn't, it's not an automated email. Yeah. yeah. You'll see like Airtable automations, this is what the emails look like from Airtable. Yeah. So like I have an email saying the vendor confirmed. Um, but you don't like, especially if you're sending it to like an outside user or you want to like look less automated, you want to use your Gmail or the office 365 account so that it's not branded and, you know, no reply at automations, blah, 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 yeah. blah. So yeah. you can give like that customized experience, even though, and that's like the conversational piece. Like you want to make sure it's not like, this is what my system says today. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's, you know, and those are some automations. And then also I have one for to send that vendor the email and then one once the status is set as confirmed to just send an email back. Um, I tried using an auto reply 
the reply to in this email. And I was noticing that even though it says you can put multiple reply to's, it will just pick up one email. So mm -hmm. the Zapier parser wasn't working. So that's why I had a secondary confirmation to the Airtable user to say, hey, someone confirmed because you can't have them reply back to you as a fail safe. You just wanted to go to parser. Yeah. So you have to kind of figure out what's more important to see that the vendor sent did it or that the system updates. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's a standard email protocol. I don't think you can have a reply to multiple. It says email addresses. Huh. <laughs> see, so I, I, for one, am a stickler on using singular versus plural, especially with um, how they've named things in automations. And so they should fix that immediately. Yes, <laughs> it was working, that was not. And I'm like, okay, yeah. it's not working anymore, you're a jerk. It does um, work in the CC and BCC. Yeah, yeah. two CC and BCC can handle lists of addresses, okay. plural, but not uh, reply to. Yes. So it should in the, gap here. I'm sorry? I said, I think it, if you set it up with Zapier to send it in Gmail, I'm 99% sure you can have more than one reply to email. That but would I'm, make sense. Hmm. I think you can. I think it's, I think it's just the, the, the um, limitations of this automation, which right. is still better than it was and better than nothing. But at the, like, it's nice if somebody really doesn't want to use Zapier, there's some, you know, elements of like collapsing your stack, but there are some definite limitations, although you can add images now to emails, which is amazing. Yeah, that is huge. <laughs> I just don't want the extra space, like the extra line breaks drive me crazy. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very powerful automation. Um, I think, yeah, you can do a ton of stuff. And then maybe another segment, we'll have you back on to talk about the Zapier side of receiving emails, which is really powerful as well and parsing them. Totally. That's a great feature as well. So there's a couple. I saw um, Parser is another one that does that, that, that said that they just came out with an Airtable integration. Um, so cool. Cool. And then dates. Yeah, dates are like the bane of everybody's existence trying to get dates right. So you need to take a lot of precaution when dealing with dates. Very cool. Thank you, Jen. That mm -hmm. is extremely powerful. I mean, just a perfect showcase of what you can do with with the automations and, you know, really just automate any kind of workflow that that, that you may have in your business. And um, people, companies that see the power of this really see what what is possible in, in Airtable and in the power of automation for your for your operations. So thank you. All right, we are now going to move on to another quick ad and Jen's going to help me with this because she is one of our primary trainers. Um, so Built on Air recently launched a training program. So check us out at, built, at training.builtonair.com. I'll go there now and you can find right now we have three courses. We'll be adding more over time. And these are all generated by people within the community, Jen being one of them, Ben Green being the other right now, and we're having uh, others that are working on courses. So if you are in need of training yourself or your business and getting people up to speed, these courses are great for um, getting deeper into what's going on and also a, a guide to walk you through step by step and they're full of videos and content to help walk you through that. You can see an overview and a quick guide on, on what it is. So Jen, maybe give a, a quick pitch for, for your course. Yes, um, so I show how to build a base quickly. Also use JotForm. I like interfaces in JotForm because there's a lot more you know, ability to calculate and to show different questions based on answers and to populate data. It also integrates with onto air and I just use that for a construction company and it's amazing. Um, you can refer back to information in the database in Airtable, which is super cool. Um, so like using JotForm as interfaces, especially if you don't want people touching your data in Airtable, you just want to be able to see it. Um, interfaces kind of force people to put in the information correctly. Um, and then getting that information into Airtable and then also using 
you know, buttons and jot form prefill links to update data in Airtable. So instead of using a portal like software, things like that, you can actually just use jot form, a, you know, a, a view in Airtable and some buttons or links and updating the information so that, again, you don't have to pay for as many users and just show some of the cool things that you can use in Zapier, we use, you know, connecting the dots between jot form and Airtable. So it's just a very, like, the beginning to show you what you can do, but you know, there's so much that you can do with the prefills and the information and just organizing and updating data without people messing things up in your base. So. Very cool. So check that out, training.builtonair.com and join up to sign up for a course and you'll be on your way to integrating Airtable with other systems and see the true power of what you can do in Airtable. So thank you, Jen. All right, our final segment for today's show is another audience question. Camille's gonna walk us through and answer a common question from the community. And go ahead, Camille. All right, um, this is a much more general question that's kind of been asked uh, so many times that I don't have a specific example of it being asked, if that makes sense. But um, keeping in the theme of automations this episode, something that I see come up a lot is when you're using the when a record matches conditions trigger for an automation, people kind of expect once you turn the automation on for it to run for all of the records that already meet the conditions. So um, I just wanted to demonstrate that it will not do that. Um, and then some ways that you can force it to, to do it. So I have a simple automation set up. So um, I just picked an arbitrary date of May 1st and I wanna um, run this automation for any order that was after May 1st. So we can see in this view that I have now that the order date is 5-18-2021. Um, and I turned this record um, or this automation on um, after this had already been set. So the only action in it is to just add the order status of pending and you can see order, order status is blank. Um, but if I were to add a new record, um, give it a date of the 19th, eventually this automation would run. Um, see, there you go. Um, if I were to delete the date out of this one and then put it back as the 18th, um, what happened is the record value for that um, record and field changed. And so now the automation will run for that record, but not before. It's looking specifically for after the automation is turned on, when does this record match the condition set? was already set before the automation is on it will not run for that record just some just a point of clarification yeah yeah the way i think of it is how i'm assuming they implemented this is they almost create like a hidden view with that criteria and so it has to be out of the view and then come into it for it to trigger mm -hmm. yeah. something i often do is like if i if i have a whole bunch of records that I need to trigger for an automation that's already on, I'll like add to the conditions where a checkbox is not checked. Yeah. And I'll just check them all, uncheck them all. And yeah, yeah that's an, another good way to do it too. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of ways you can get around that, but definitely you need to be aware of that. You also need to be aware of the opposite where sometimes you don't want everything to run, um, you know, and, and so you gotta be careful of, not having it run on everything and only the the stuff that you want so <clears throat> yeah it, it brings up a good point of when is it a good idea to do wait a minute i'm discovering this live can you change the trigger oh my god what, what? Uh, <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute oh my god. <laughs> everyone stop the press <laughs> <laughs> I was, when I was pulling this up earlier, I was like, oh, they changed the user interface mm -hmm. a little bit for um, triggers and whatnot. But now, would you look at that folks? You can change a trigger for an automation after you've created it. That's a game changer, yeah. <laughs> even though it's really, really like a very, very small kind <laughs> of improvement. Hours of my life. Hours of my life. Yeah. Hours. I have like a thousand automations because I realized, oh, I don't want this one. I want the other one. Yeah. Boy, howdy. 
That's awesome. They also, the integration section below. Yes, yeah. it's a lot more organized. Yeah. Um, they just kind of yeah. grouped it by, you know, what the uh, uh, integration is. Yeah. So. Very cool. Well, that's there we awesome. go, discovering new things. Sometimes Airtable puts stuff out without announcing it. That's not their yeah. first time. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes they do that a lot. Um, I'm sure they'll have like a, a roundup post maybe uh, I don't know, either next week or by the end of the month, that'll have that as like a little footnote, but you've heard it here first, folks. Yep. It's, uh, it's there. Yay. Cool. Yeah, we'll have to do that. That could be our next uh, trick that we show. All right, thank you, Camille. So very useful, very, very good to understand the, the dynamics of how automations work and when they run and why they're not running and how to get them to run again. Very powerful. All right. That concludes today's episode of the Built on Air podcast. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you to our hosts. And we're grateful and glad that you could be with us and excited to see what you build with your Airtable. And feel free to let us know in the comments of what you'd like to see on our show next time. So until then, we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out our sponsor, ontair.com, and we will see you next time on the Built on Air podcast. <laughs>